think you guys are going to do this. They're like getting and so it's super nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you, Madeline, and thank you, Christine, for organizing these webinar webinars. It's really, uh, and now we're doing it in person, and I hope you're okay if I don't use these, because it'll be hard for me to, for you to uh, understand me. I'll try to be as far as possible. But um, right now, uh, I came back to Lincoln, but uh, to work full time for Lincoln uh, in December. I've been working first. I worked for an, a whole a whole year, like part time, going back, putting everything back the way it was. We in, in these two um, locations that I'm going to talk to you about the the outdoor lab and the finca. Uh, we had them before. So I'll just give you a, a little tour about both of the locations. I will focus more on the finca because it is so much to talk about in an hour would be impossible to cover everything. But I just hope that someday you can join us at link and you can see more. So I'm a um, native plant specialist, although it's a specialty crops program. So we're trying to promote native plants uh, as crops and we are in cooperative extension in the department of, in the College of Natural Resources, Environment and Human Sciences. And those of you who are listening and who are, have joined us uh, via Zoom, uh, thank you for being with us. Is it not skipping now? I'm sorry? Is it not skipping now? Yeah, I, that's him going, there we go. So this is the, I will, it's not necessarily the outline. I just want to show you some of the projects that are going, that are going on right now. We have a, the Finca project that I'll talk about in the Native Plant Outdoor Lab. We also have native fruit plots at Busby Farm, which is an organic farm that is run by Lincoln University. And they're all, they're all, uh, also in Jeff City. And we have the Native Plant Academy, which is a program that we started in Kansas City. It consists of webinars and also in-person training. It wasn't a, it's a work that we are doing with the Department of Conservation and also with the Missouri Prairie Foundation. And the, another project that is going later in the year is uh, the Native Plant School with Powell Garden in Kansas City. But we'll focus today on the first two. First, a special thing. What is the specialty grass program? Uh, well, we promote native edible plants and other specialty crops using sustainable agricultural practices. And we try to increase awareness about the importance in conservation too. And the finca, can we tr turn the lights on off? Maybe that would be a little, it's a, a picture would look a little better. Is it possible? No? It's across the building. <laughs> okay, so. Okay. Okay, so that's good. So the Finca project is actually, well, we have it in, uh, on campus. It's one of the Fincas that we created with this project, but I just want to explain what, how this got started. The Finca project is actually, a, what is the acronym? for families integrating nature, conservation, and agriculture. But my, but, but, but finca in Spanish means a small farm. I'm originally from El Salvador, so I just want to at least use the word finca, some that sounds Spanish, and, <laughs> and, the, and bring the, the idea of what fincas are. So in fincas, you are in, a, in, in Latin America and in other countries, in, in tropical countries, you grow mostly perennial crops. It could be a coffee finca, it could be an orange finca, but you usually have a, every, almost every single space in, a, in those farms is used because they are perennials. And so many times they are native plants. So that was mostly what we wanted to do with, the, with, this, with this project. 
the finga, and I added the eco farm because when I told people we have a finca on campus, but they would say, what is finca? <laughs> so if you say eco farm, it sounds like kind of neat and, and it's ecologically sound. And at the same time, it's a little farm. So it is located in the, on the South Farm campus. It's, uh, I'm giving you the address so you can come and visit us because it's open, but you need to contact me so we can make arrangements. We don't, we are not always there. The Finca is actually located, this is a teaching greenhouse. It's an old a greenhouse that was established back in the 1960s or even before. It was saved because it was considered back in, the, in 2010, it was considered a historic building. Otherwise it would have, it wouldn't be here anymore. But it's, so we use it for native plants. We don't have any uh, special, we don't have uh, air conditioning or heating in the greenhouse, but daily plants don't need heating in the, in the winter. And they are so, oh, we don't use it. Maybe just one month of the year where it's like maybe July or August when it's too hot. But most of the times you can, we can grow natives or and other perennial crops. This is a picture taken last year. We were still try, uh, um, re uh, renovating what we had left. And now it's really looking better. Mm. To show you the diversity, this is the Finca Eco Farm on campus. And if you see, if you're familiar with uh, this location, is if you come on Leslie Boulevard, and then you turn on Chestnut toward Lincoln. So you can see that, um, see this, it would be Leslie on this side, on the, let's see, it would be the, the south, south, uh, south of campus would be where Leslie is. So next to it, there is a, there is a, a, a row of trees that are really important for us because it's good for pollinators. And then we have the, I guess I, I this is not working. The, does the light anyway, come on? I'm sorry. Does the light come on? on that? No. Okay. You need me to skip it or skip to the next page. Yeah, the, the battery is going. So we'll, um, anyway, you can see. See, you can, uh, here we have the creek next to the, the where the greenhouse is. So, um, in the, we have so much diversity here. We use every space. And so we can, uh, in this area, we have all the perennial events. And then we have, and I'll show you little details. It's impossible that I show you everything right now. But it's just to show you how diverse, that how uh, we're using every space in this, uh, in this little farm. This is a, a nice design. Uh, I work with Sue, Sue Bartlett. She's a landscape designer and she has a business that has, has been working with me for since we started the Native Plants Program and now with the Specialty Crops Program. So uh, we have a, a few, I just want to show you, like for example, you see here where the cut flowers are. And it's just to just show you that we use every space. We planted bottle. A gourd last year, and we even have a, a bed with spoke. We mm -hmm. it, because people want to know what is spoke or how it, many people haven't seen. Maybe they had spoke when they were little, and they go back and they and they're just surprised to see spoke weed. We prune it so it doesn't get too tall, and we do share some of these areas with groundhogs. Believe it or not, they don't bother us. We do, we are really, um, I mean, the place is large enough, you know, and we protect the vegetables that they might uh, be eating. Some of, some of them get, eat, get eaten, but um, it's, it really doesn't, uh, it's not a, it's not too, it's, a big, it's not a big deal for us. Then we have um, in the middle, native mints that are, a, this is a little study that we're doing, we planted tomatoes in between the, the mints. 
the, the deer, groundhogs, and rabbits don't like mints. And then, uh, so you put the tomato, but uh, we haven't, we don't have final results yet. <laughs> we, we are gonna try it. We tried last year, but it wasn't enough. We didn't, we didn't have enough uh, mint to protect the plants. It, we're gonna take questions at the end if you don't mind. And so, so we're gonna try this year. You can come and see what, how a uh, hairy mountain mint grows, how large it can be in one year. You put the tomato in the middle, we see what happens. And there's things like that that we're doing, that we have a row of papa trees that we establish, but we do have them already uh, planted in the back. We have a, a figs. We're going to have a, um, a bed with figs. We already are growing it in other places, and I show you that. These are just a couple of pictures of the teaching greenhouse. We, this was last year, the first one. We uh, show, uh, you can see where we, we use it for propagation. All these plants are gone. We use them to establish them elsewhere. And um, on the right, you can see that we have a kale and garlic growing. It really grows well. Uh, in the teaching greenhouse, it serves to us as a demonstration for teaching. We had a class last year in the fall about garlic. So participants planted the, the garlic. So they are gonna come back and see what they planted. So it's just, we are trying to, to add as much as possible hands-on experiences. And this was going to be, um, we have eight raised beds. So it's, it's really very diverse what we grow. We have workshops. This is the garlic workshop that we had. And we have our student, uh, Jerome Riley, that is just a delight as, of a student and a worker. And he's going to graduate soon, so we're going to miss him. But, uh, if it wasn't for many students like him, we wouldn't be where we are. We have so many things that we have accomplished. He's a hard worker. And we have also, when we teach people, we also, they also help us to increase like our uh, nursery production. So, but people also live with plants. There have been many new gardens just by coming and help. In the, in the gardens. So you're welcome to come. We usually have a volunteer days. If you're interested, just let me know. We have, uh, last year, we did have tours, but they were really one-on-one. -on -one. And, but if we can offer uh, tours or groups, uh, if you request it, we'll be happy to do it. And this is to Bartolette. She loves giving tours. Mm -hmm. And so she, 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 or if I'm busy, she's there. Another aspect of the fincas uh, is that every, as I say, every place, every spot in the finca is uh, used. We're trying to, re to replace every possible spot of grass. Grass that is not good for anything. And I'm talking about fescue or blue grass. That it, so in this finca, uh, we are, just, and we mow it, some of it, some of it. In, but in the places where we can, we establish wildflowers. In, uh, and this is again, at uh, Lincoln, we have a lot of help, but in a, in a garden situation, you can just adapt a small area and then you can have your grass too. So I'm not saying that I'm completely against grass. <laughs> it just, it's just an, an option. In, 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 the, in the teaching greenhouse on the west side, we have a nursery and here is the place where we're growing our natives and also other specialty crops. 
I'm in the, and also we have an area where we grow uh, natives, not only natives, we have, so you can see if, uh, zinnias, everybody loves zinnias, they, they grow so easy mm -hmm. and they're so good for the pollinators. So we have different, different species and um, last year we grew lots of the liatris. They were so, they receded themselves. So of course, sometimes you, you just have to control them. Just wait a minute, we need more, we need diversity. If they can compete with each other. So you have to, to keep an eye on them. And I mentioned that we do sustainable practices. It might look a little ugly right now, but we have some tarps that we use to kill the grass. And this is gonna be our new fig bed. So we won't use chemicals. It's it just, it we'll just put mulch or maybe even some additional soil and we'll plant the figs. And, and here you see on the, on the top part and on the left side, uh, we're, we have a white, uh, we have annual, annual rye that we use as a, as a cover crop. And we're trying to control Bermuda grass. Bermuda grass uh, doesn't like shade. So we can, we cut these and then you cover it and use it as a green mulch. So that's another way to control the Bermuda that is so awful. In the Finca, we also have um, shade gardens and we use the linden tree, the existing linden tree, and we are creating a um, shade garden with ferns and other tolerant plants, shade tolerant plants. We have um, sweet williams that are so beautiful, they love shade. In, in many cases, I hear more people complaining about not having a space for a garden because they have too much shade, but there are so many plants to choose from. So we have examples and we can show you if, if others. And I'll show you some in the outdoor lab. We also, because we don't apply chemical things, that is a, a, friend, a wildlife friendly place. These are our robins. They are, I, I've never seen a, a nest with seven eggs. They all hatch. And this is still one that was trying to come out in two days. <laughs> you know, robins are common, but there's, it's so much fun to see the two parents. And we cannot plant, we cannot water the plants where they are. They are in the nursery. So that's their spot. Mm -hmm. So, and then we have this little, I think it's a warbler. Anybody knows about birds correct me? Um, yeah, you run into one of the windows. Oh. But Jeromia found it and thank goodness it, it flew away. It was okay. They were just stunned. And for, because that, because we have so many glass, uh, uh, glass windows, we actually have some uh, Breathe now in every window, so it's just a way to to warn them. And we haven't had any any casualties or any problems <laughs> after that. And of course, because we grow fruits, we do value added. We actually offer classes about value added. Uh, we were talking with Natalie about the dandy wild. Uh, it, was a, it was an event that we had before where we served a, a whole course dinner with, uh, and every recipe has at least one native edible. Oh. And it was pretty popular. We got, uh, it, uh, the, fir the first one, we got 300 people. And it was a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So we had to make it smaller, but we hope to do it again at a smaller scale. And this is the commercial kitchen where you can see that they were processing the elderberry. And we have some, it was just, it's fun. It's just a nice way to dish people and 
people help us, volunteers help us to harvest what we produce. And these are uh, during the rest, when we de develop recipes, we have classes when it was more like a testing, testing uh, meetings. Uh, we invite people to come and try the foods just to, just to see if they like it. And, we, and some of the best recipes were served at dining while. So it was their choice that, um, based on their choice, we serve, we, we work with the dining while. And here it is, that was our, one of the dining wilds where we're serving everything that has some native in it. Of course, we use things like chicken, but we can flavor it with litany that is a native mint, like oregano. And I'll show you some examples. And the last thing about Finca is part of the, the experience with the Finca project was to visit Fincas, real thing, Fincas in, in the tropics in Latin America. So we went to, to, uh, to my country with um, these two guys. I don't know if you, you are from uh, Jefferson City, you might have met uh, Mr. Hill Flowers. Uh, she, uh, he passed away, unfortunately, just so sad because he was one of our best supporters. Mm -hmm. He even went, and I'll show you, I don't know if I have a picture of that, but he um, got so excited about the native greens, perennial greens, and he started selling at the market, and he would sell them. So we hope to find other people that would do the same. <clears throat> this was quite an experience with them because for me, it was, I was home, mm -hmm. and it was great to have people from here going there. And we did have a finca in Hewu City in the Wood Hill. This is near Tyson. And unfortunately, Mary was one of our great supporters and she passed away just a couple of years ago. But her last years were so enjoyable and she even told me before she passed away, you gave me a, well, her visit to El Salvador, plus having this finca in her own yard was uh, it was the best thing that that happened to her in the at least in the last years and this is how it looked this was the original finca in Hebu city so we have different designs if you are interested in having your own you have an acre or half an acre we can share with you the different uh, models that we developed you can adapt it as your own and you can see in this, on this, in, on the um, right lower corner, there is a sand prairie in this one. And, and what happened, this is actually a natural prairie, but they used to mow it. So with, they stopped mowing, and then all the flowers start showing. So it was just a, quite an experience for us. And we have the uh, this similar things that we had at the Finca on campus, from fruit trees to perennial uh, crops, cut flowers, beds, I miss fell, and even a high tunnel. Now, let, uh, I, from now on, I'll show you some of the plants that we grow in the Finca. And these are, we're all harvested at the Finca. It's so colorful and so bright colors. Starting with the figs. We do have them growing already, but these are small. We're not talking about highly commercial areas, but it's enough for a household and even for a farm, farmer, they wanna become, they wanna do some commercial or get some income. We have, a, we have them in a small hoop house and you can see here is right next to the the, um, um, the race field. I mean, how do you call that? Where people race race um, corral field. The track. Was, the track. In the, yeah, the crack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That yeah. So it's right next to it, and then here you can see on the on the fence we were go growing corns. 
So every space is used. And here we have pigs that we are, they don't look great because it was immediately after, this photo was after a winter, but they, they uh, we propagate them. And also we uh, teach, we uh, give classes about it. We have persimmons. Of course, persimmons grow, can grow anywhere. And they might be, uh, some people might not like them because of their so. So they, they might be so productive, but there's so much that you can do with them. These, these persimmons actually were uh, harvested, not, not from the finca, but from the outdoor lab. And I'll show you the two trees growing together, how they look right now. We, uh, we grew it from seed. It just, somebody brought the seed, they started growing, we let, it, we let them be. And then the, all the three years that I was at, at the university, I didn't realize it was already producing. And those are the largest persimmons I have seen. So we are trying to reproduce these ones. I don't know if they are gonna be the same, but they were really perfect. With so many flowers around, so much pollination occurring. And then you have lots of fruits. And of course, we make recipes with them, our famous persimmon cookies. And it, we, we might have a field day. We're planning on a field day in, in the fall. And we hope to have this um, for you or for whoever comes. We have wild, we have the uh, wild plums, and this is all in the back of the teaching greenhouse. So we have wild plums, two different species, and uh, the best that you see there are um, established with with um, wild leaves. And I'll show you a picture of them. And this is what we do with wild plums. They were so perfect last year, but as any other on any other fruit tree, you have to maintain them. If you don't prune them, you might not get a good production. We do prune the wild plums. We keep them clean uh, because we get, we get like, um, a brown rot in the fruit. And so and we really, and we take, we're taking data and we found that the ones that are isolated, they're not too close to each other, produce the best plums. And it's just, you can have one plum in your yard and with, with white flowers, and maybe, I mean, they're so common that maybe somebody else will have another one for good pollination. So we have, we made jam, the best jam. Anybody else try here to, to do a jam with white plums? I hope you try it. It's really good, it's a, the best. And we try uh, also making a, I always have a, but it's like a slush. How do you say like a smoothie? I'm sorry? A smoothie? A smoothie, <laughs> yes. It does, uh, we made a kind of like a smoothie. We're just delicious. So there are so many things that you can do with the wild fruits and pop-ups, of course. It has been a lot, it has been in the news and it's considered the native fruit in Missouri now. And uh, this is, I, I prefer to eat them fresh, but some people make desserts with them, of course. And, and one way to preserve them is just to keep the pulp uh, frozen. And this is just to show you that they are very common. They grow, this is a natural area near my place. And this is my house where you can see a, a papa right next to the house. So they, are, they belong in gardens, at least is my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> and if you, if, if you don't like the fruits, you can grow them for the zebra, swallowtail, butterfly. Oh. The zebras depend on papa leaves. And this is the white leaves that I was talking about. We can, you can grow them in, a, in the shade. They do need a very nutritious soil. 
and uh, it's like any woodland species. They they grow in the shade. So another another thing you can do with your shade is that. And uh, one way, and you can see we're growing with the with the violets. They do really well. And this is what we had uh, at Lincoln. We still have these raised beds. The the thing is on the other side, but we kind of expand it around. We have different plantings. So these are the, the leeks already uh, wilting, and it's a little late in the, in the season, but they do really well in raised in race beds like that. And they can be perennial if you just harvest the leaves. And this was one of the recipes, a potato casserole with white leaves is really delicious. And this was one of the best recipes I think we did. It was, we had a chef that came and it, he was extremely creative mm -hmm. and, and did this focaccia bread with swine leaves. Mm -hmm. And this is all, most of the plants that, I, that it came from the finca in surrounding areas in, 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 on campus. Another plant that we grow is a golden glow or soja, it's a perennial. It's a plant that can be uh, grown as a perennial green. And um, it, it also blooms in the fall, is in the sunflower family. The Cherokee in North Carolina is the East fan of the Cherokee. They're promoting soja is their, their um, Indian name for golden glow, along with white leaves, because it's some of the, some of the uh, crops that are being lost in time. So they are bringing them back. <coughs> and this is golden glow. It's when you harvest it and you can use it in any recipe that calls for spinach. And this, uh, this is one of the recipes I prepare. Really tasty. Leaks and golden glow. Perennial plants that you can grow in your yard in the shade. <clears throat> Kaplan is one that is very common, but it's also a, it's, we have it in, in the finca and we harvest the leaves in the green uh, in the spring and they and allow the flowers to develop in the fall for pollinators. And it's when you harvest the leaves. If they, when one day started growing, when the plant starts growing, uh, producing the inflorescence, it's, it's, it might be too late. It has to be early in the spring. And other things, we have, a, I have pictures uh, of other places that all these plants are in the finca, because I, I don't have great pictures sometimes. So this is in my own yard, where you can see uh, <clears throat> the, Jerusalem artichoke or sandchoke, and we use the tubers to we pickle them, and they can be used in, in many recipes. Many they, all these plants that I prefer, most of them are kind of aggressive, mm -hmm. but that's a point. A good point to be a crop. If you harvest it, then you won't have any problems. And nettle. Is one that is becoming more uh, popular because it's so nutritious. It's not native, but it's very nutritious and grows fast, uh, really easy. This is another of the recipes we serve at the dining while. We have native onions that use for as an ornament with the flowers or for pollinators or to eat it. and to serve in, in appetizer. This was, it gives a subtle flavor of onion and they look so pretty. And others that we grow, I mentioned the, the men that, I, the, that we grow with tomatoes. This is the one that we are using, Harry Mountain Mint. Great for the pollinators, but also good for the tomatoes, we hope. 
And this is one of the recipes that we use. That really looked just amazing. It was amazing. So I really hope that we can do it again. And you can, you're able to try them. And uh, ditan is another mint. It's a very small plant that grows in open areas. And we have it in small uh, areas in, in the finca. And we use it instead of oregano. And uh, used to flavor things like chicken, which is it's really, really tasty. The plants start growing early in the, in the spring, but it, it just goes all the way to the fall. And others like lead plant uh, can be used, the leaves can be used for tea. It's a legume, uh, but you can use the, the leaves. And this is the three different kinds of teas that we serve in tiny while using sumac, hairy mounted mint, and uh, lead plant. And the last one I have for the Inca is we also did a, a, a study growing arrowhead. This is a wetland plant that produces edible tubers. They do really well in the tops. Those that are uh, just like uh, the ones that where you buy or where people buy uh, salt for cattle, that those kind of um, containers. And it's, they're really productive. We're working on it they do produce well. And some edible flowers also are in the finca, like um, violets and spiderworts. And here's your salad that is uh, with red, red bud flowers, violets, and you can add a uh, white violets too in, in the leaves of the spiderwort and the flowers too. In some that are really common in yards, they're, they're weedy, but they can be eaten. And we have these growing in those races on their own. And if they're growing and it's so perfect, we just go there and keep harvesting. So this is, we have hemmed with kale growing happily. And first lane is another one. It's now the time. This is the plant that we use for the weed that grows in the summer, in the, in the hottest time of the year, and they keep growing like cactus. But we keep, we harvest it and it's very nutritious. Have a omega-3 and it's, it's considered a, yeah, a, a super food. And all these plants are growing in the, in the teaching greenhouse around the finca. Now, um, the last part is about the Native Plant Outdoor Lab. I show you a lot of the plants that we also have in the outdoor lab. This we create, we, um, it's open for students and we hope that um, it's being used more now after COVID. And it is, it actually, uh, just recently, the Missouri Prairie Foundation created what they call the Garden of Excellence program. So it, it is considered a Garden of Excellence. You can find it in, a, in, their, in their website. We're there. Mm -hmm. And we have more than 100 species, from white flowers to ferns to grasses, shrubs, vines, trees. And you can see it. And this is our diagram we have handles for you and you can you can take a this is would you see this this uh, diagram plants move i cannot tell you that they some of the plants that you see in the picture the woody woody plants are still there the same but most of the herbaceous plants have been moving around so we are trying to create groupings uh, to make it look a little more contained. But it's, it's just, for us, it's a, the light. This is how it looked before. This was back in 2011. We were establishing the garden and we were creating a rain garden. This is in, on, also in Chestnut, 900. 
And here later, after a couple of years later, we have already vegetation established. And this little path take you to a rain garden. The rain garden that you saw that was being built is where Sue, Kisian, and Jerome are standing. And the water with the, the water penetrates so so good. You can see, like yesterday, we had a big rain. There was no water in the rain garden, it just goes through. And before it was flooded. Mm -hmm. So so it's really bad the vegetation changes. And these are some of the front beds with scoriosis and blue indigo. Right now, if you want to come and see, if you like blue indigo, please come. It's just blooming everywhere. Mm. It's just really beautiful. And see the persimmon trees, this was about five, six years ago. And I'll show you a picture later where they are already grown. And this is our shade garden in the outdoor lab where we, do ha we have um, ferns and combine and celandine poppy and wild ginger and others. And this is the, the same, the, the actually the um, um, ferns are right next to this fringe tree. So it's the whole area is considered the shade garden. And this is uh, looking at the Allen Hall, and here we have a foster hall, and you can see the two trees already grown. Very productive for simmons. This is how it would look in the summer, more with more summer flowers. And this is in the winter. We leave it like that. We don't clean the, the grass if you follow. And you do um, um, have read about the importance of leaving a standing vegetation in the winter is what we do it for the pollinators. There are many butterflies that only um, hibernate in the form of egg, or it could be caterpillar, it could be chrysalis. We had a zebra, swallowtail, um, chrysalis for 10 months, and it went through winter, and it just hatched. Mm -hmm. It just, um, I mean, the reason we have it is because we, we protected it, but, but it, it went through that, and it was outdoors. So they, in some time, they run into when I'm cleaning the garden, I will find those caterpillars. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it, it's in the, when we do the cleaning, it's in the spring. And this is how it looked this year, a little better, after a year of tender loving care. And we have a service berries. You see those in the, in the background. So, so it's, again, every, every week, every, every month, you see something different, different colors, different uh, flowers. And this is a little bit how it looks right now, maybe a couple of weeks ago. And your persimmon trees. And it's waiting for you to come to visit. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, that's my, that was my last uh, um, slide. And I just want to acknowledge my, that this is my, it's a team effort. Jeromia is really has been the greatest, and Sue a Bartlett, and then Randy, my husband, actually, is a, helps me with a lot of the nice pictures. <clears throat> and with that, I just want to thank all a, some a cooperation that we have with Girl Native and in the conservation department. And this project has was a, all the projects that we have a link, but most of them are supported by NIFA, the National, National Institute of Food and Agriculture. So we just, uh, the next steps uh, uh, now is to create more fincas. Well, my my uh, uh, dream is that we can create, we can work with everyone, you not know, only schools, maybe churches. Churches have too much grass. Uh, schools have too much grass. Lincoln has too much, too much grass. So we can actually use the small space that we don't have to take it all. And we can plant flowers. 
and countries that can be more supportive for everybody. And with that, I can, I, I'm done, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. And we're gonna start with you because you were, you were, I, well, I, was, uh, I was really interested about the, I think everybody perked up and you said, that's not tomatoes, but with, with mint, it's it, like you said, even if you pick it, but it's sitting on runners and vegetative propagation all the time. It's like, how do you, when you're doing that, tomatoes, are you putting like a cylinder or something in the ground to keep it somewhat contained so you don't destroy your bed or garden? Yeah. In years? In, hairy mint that mint is, uh, is uh, it has shallow roots. It's not like your regular mint yeah. that they really go on the, the ground. We just pull the center plants and then you have a perfect spot it's almost like a pot where you put your tomato uh -huh. okay. <clears throat> and we have a I mean that have been prepared and with compost and everything but i'll keep you posted because i we don't know if it's gonna work we're gonna try <clears throat> any questions that you might have well i don't know if we can get the chat and see uh -huh. Yeah, so just go ahead and I hope you all like it and I hope that you can come yeah, and visit us. Yeah. This, this gardens and these fingers for you, especially if you live in the city, you just have it there. And you can just take a walk and maybe go through the greenway and then you see the finger. And sometimes it's, it's close in the back, but it's why it, it's good to, if you can contact me, I think I have a, my email. Oh, my email is right there. Yes, Christine. Oh, um, really fast. Uh, anyone on Zoom, feel free to ask questions. I do have someone um, who is texting me your questions if you have them. But I do quickly want to announce our, that this is part of the Lincoln University Missouri River Regional Library Lecture Series. We have a Facebook page, um, as well as the library um, updates on their Facebook page and their website as well. Um, if you've enjoyed this program, we have several programs coming up throughout the summer. Uh, on June 23rd, I do believe, at 7 p.m. Yes, June 23rd, at 7 p.m., um, our next speaker is Dr. James Smith, a licensed a uh, professional counselor and Lincoln University faculty member who's going to talk about marijuana, just the facts, looking at it from a neuroscience perspective. So talking about, um, you know, basically just the facts of marijuana. You know, is it healthy, is it not healthy, those sorts of things. Uh, I will be back in July talking about um, amazing origins, the archaeology of corn. And then uh, we will have Dr. Mayor Argetti in August. Um, I have not quite gotten her talk. Uh, topic yet, uh, but I will keep you guys all informed. But again, June 23rd, uh, Marijuana Just the Facts with Mr. James Smith. Thank you. Is there, any, is there anybody in the chat asking questions? <laughs> Can you see the chat or? Well, it's, it's kind of hard to, it's kind of late. I know that it's a lady it gets it's tired to listen to someone. <laughs> but um, so just feel free to contact me anytime. And my email is in the, in that. It's there. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Nadia. Nadia. Yes. It's Pat Baylor, and I'm with a friend, Samira, and her and Nasta's daughter, Amra, and we're all interested in volunteering. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> so, you, so you have my. Oh. Amra's not quite a year, so I'm not sure, but I bet she could help with something. Well, we have plenty for you to do in. And you how do we go about that, uh, Nadia? How, how do we get in touch and, and find out about what volunteer things there are to do? And I, I have my email in the presentation. Did you, did you miss it? Uh-huh. 
Uh, if you can see, it's a long, like a long email. Uh huh. But it's. Uh, I have. I think I have your address on my computer. So uh, okay. is it all right for me to send a message, and then we could get in touch from there? Yes, please. Oh, good. Muy bien. Gracias, señora. De nada. And uh, I have um, I have a um, a Facebook page, Native Plants and More. So okay. you can also message me. It's much easier to remember Native Plants and More. Okay. Uh, just send me a message. I will communicate. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. Everybody is happy with the with everything. So I appreciate you coming. And then we hope to see you sometime at LinkedIn. Yeah, and I, that sounds interesting. The, your presentation, Christine. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I wanna I wanna work with you with native plants and I, I mean I know that you in for three years that they were being mowed in the we do have a question okay um are there any plans to use hazel to use hazelnuts or partner with the arbor day foundation and do their hazelnut mm -hmm. yes. i'm sorry i cannot answer that question i don't know isn't there some kind of a hazelnut project that Arbor Day Foundation. It might be in the, the agroforestry program at MU. You can check, uh, send me an email and I will forward uh, the contact information. Or you can just find them in their website, Center for Agroforestry at MU. We do have hazelnut established, but I don't have a particular project. Okay. Okay, well, thank you. And there are some more handouts. Uh, uh, there is one handout about the finger. It does, it has a diagram from the from Cable City. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm glad to work with you. I live a mile from the end of the end. Yeah, yeah, come. And we have a responsibility. So we can just include you in the Yeah, yeah. One of the goals is to mix with the group. We plan the yard.